Automatic high beams are much newer technology than the automatic headlights that we talked about in the previous video, which I recommend going back to watch first if you came to this video first, because it's going to cover some of the basics of this, and it'll explain why this daylight sensor can't be used at all in automatic high beams. So the driver already has the headlights on and is going to switch these high beams on. So we're going to send a signal from this switch to the ECU saying, hey, I want those high beams on. Is it okay if I turn them on? And it's going to take data and figure out if that's okay or not. Once it figures out if that's okay, it's going to send power to the high beams. Like I said in the previous video, there'd be a relay here too, but here on Car Simplified, we like to simplify cars. Now, under what conditions do we want the high beams to turn off when we have the switch on and we want the computer to do the turning on and off for us? Well, obviously when there's a car coming towards us, we don't want to blind them, so we'll turn the headlights off when we see headlights coming towards us. And if we're behind a car close enough where there's no point in having the high beams on because you're just shining light in their rearview mirror and there's not enough street between you and the car ahead of you to merit any high beams being on to illuminate anything extra, so might as well turn them off. Now maybe, just maybe, if this sensor was tilted up just enough so that oncoming light would hit it, then we'd be able to see high beams coming at us or headlights coming at us and use that data to turn off our high beams. If headlights coming towards us were the only thing we had to consider, then maybe we'd be able to get away with that, but that doesn't account for taillights that are ahead of us. Taillights are comparatively more dim and they're red, so less light is getting through to this sensor, making it pretty much useless. So instead of a daylight sensor, we're gonna use these two forward-facing cameras. These are behind the windshield, so what the driver sees, they see pretty much, and we're going to be able to take data from them and these can go to one individual unit that processes just the camera data, and that unit can output data to the input of this computer. It's just the important data, and this doesn't have to figure out all the stuff that the engine's doing, the body's doing, and the cameras are doing, or it can just be one big computer that handles it all. And because we're gonna simplify it today, we're just gonna send these wires both into this input here. So in the previous video when we were talking about this daylight sensor, it was basically just a meter. It was dark, brighter, brighter, brightest. And that's all there really was to it. With these cameras here, there's a lot more information to pick up. It's just like my camera here is picking up all of what you're seeing here and sending it to a memory card. Just like how you have to interpret what you're currently seeing and hearing, this computer has to interpret what it's seeing on these cameras. If it sees a bright red dot or two, then it knows, hey, there's probably a car in front of us. Let's turn the high beams off so we're not blinding them. Same goes for if there's a bright white light ahead and it's getting closer, getting brighter, it knows, hey, there's a car coming. We need to shut off those high beams. Once it knows that, the output signal that is currently activating these high beams will just shut off. Now, one of the issues with the system that will eventually get fixed as these computers get smarter is that some very reflective signs reflect back so much light from your own lights that it thinks that it's an oncoming car and will actually shut off the high beams because of that. However, that might not be the worst thing in the world because you are sending your high beam light at that sign and it's reflecting back at you, so maybe it's for the best. Now technically, these cameras don't have to be behind the glass like I put them in this drawing, but they're already there on a lot of cars for other purposes, like active braking, where if you're coming up on something and you don't notice it, the car will brake for you. That's doing the same processing with these cameras, and it's going to be using the output to turn the brakes on using the ABS unit. Now, technically, the cameras used for this don't have to be behind the windshield like these, but these cameras are typically already here on a lot of cars for other purposes. Things like automatic braking and lane assist. If you've already got the cameras here and you've got a box thinking about what it's seeing already, you don't really need to add an extra camera with an extra processor to figure out what that extra camera is looking at just for the high beams. Having an extra camera like this in the front bumper could mean extra equipment failure when a fender bender occurs. Plus, if it's raining hard enough that the driver needs to turn the windshield wipers on in order to see, the cameras probably can't see much either, so having the cameras behind where the wiper blade will hit is going to be an extra benefit. If you have any further questions about how this system works, don't be afraid to ask in the comment section below. If I don't have an answer for you, someone else probably will. If your question happens to be about this relay that I didn't draw until just now, check out my video on relays. I think it does a good job of covering why they're used, how they work. You'll even get to see the inside of one. Either way, thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video.